I'm out here running, testing shoes like always. Today, I'm in the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer V2. It's a mouthful, but it's a shoe I like. It's a follow-up to a shoe that we really loved. So I want you to come along for a run with me and let's talk about what it's all about. Oh, we got a train coming, hang on. Now, if you're new to the Super Comp Trainer, it's New Balance's thickest, cushiest, bounciest shoe ever. We loved the V1. It was so thick. It was like a pogo stick. It just made running fun. Really springy and bouncy. It's a big, heavy shoe. Version two is like an entirely new shoe. It shares the name and gets the V2 designation, but it's a different animal entirely. Now that's good and bad. We runners, we really fear when a company messes with a shoe we love. I'm guilty of that. I've got some shoes I've loved historically that got changed and I've never gotten over it. People that love the Trainer V1 might be in that same boat, I think, because this is a totally different experience. The biggest reason for that is New Balance dropped the stack height. And so that's the, the stack height is the thickness of the shoe. How much is under your foot? Before it was 47 millimeters. It was a thick, thick shoe. Now World, Reg World Athletics regulations say that a shoe for performance purposes can't be thicker than 40 millimeters. Now, why does that matter? Because they can do all sorts of things within that thickness to make a shoe really fast, add components. And by limiting the thickness, there's a limited amount of things that you can do to try to make a shoe faster. But you make a shoe thicker, you make a shoe heavier. So these really thick, heavy shoes, like the Trainer V1, you're not winning marathons in them, so it doesn't matter. Nobody lining up at the New York City Marathon is gonna wear that shoe. At least not now, right? Conceivably, there might've been a day. These shoes are just too heavy, but they make training a heck of a lot of fun. So I say forget the 40 millimeter regulation. And even if you're just an everyday runner like myself, not winning world champs or national championships, it doesn't matter. Nobody's gonna invalidate your BQ because you wore a shoe that was above 40 millimeters. Now, the good news, Trainer V2 is exactly at 40 millimeters. New Balance shaved everything off, brought it down to 40 millimeter stack. What that does is it makes the shoe a little bit firmer. You don't have all that bouncy goodness of the foam. Um, it's still a lot of foam under there. There's still a lot of cushioning, make no mistake. Uh, it's plenty soft. All of my easy runs on the shoe have been great, but it has a different feel. That pre previous shoe had a little bit more dense foam too. Uh, it just was springier. I've said that a couple times, but I, it just had that effect. You landed, you sunk into it, and it just felt like you bouncing a little more. This one, Trainer V2, just a little snappier. It just has a more of a performance feel. Maybe you'd want to take it out for tempo runs a little bit more than you might have the other one. Eh, it's a big heavy shoe. I'm not gonna use it for speed days. I want a shoe that's built for that purpose for those days. Something a little lighter, something a little more responsive. Not this shoe. I wanted this shoe for those easy runs. I don't care about the performance of it. I just wanted to feel good. It still feels good. It's just a different experience. Um, they made the shoe, the foam, a little less dense on this version. And why that matters is a shoe that, a foam that is less dense weighs less. It just got more air, doesn't have as much material packed into the space, but it also compresses a little easier, typically. And so that's what I feel with this shoe. That foam is not as thick, it's not as uh, dense. Therefore, I kind of feel like I bottom out the foam a little bit every once in a while. I'm a heel striker, especially at slow paces. Uh, not a heavy heel striker, or not an extreme heel striker, I should say, but like I can feel myself hitting the bottom limit of that foam. And because there's a carbon fiber plate in there, I experience that. We're out doing yard work today too, apparently. So because there's a carbon fiber plate embedded in that foam, I feel it when I get to the bottom of the limit of the, the foam. And it just feels a little bit more of like a thunk than I got in the first where I sunk and then kind of rebounded up. Now, the plate, it's still kind of the same concept as in V1. New Balance has gone to an energy arc platform is what they call it. It's basically a cantilevered shaped plate. So it runs the length of the shoe, but it also has a little bit of curvature side to side. And it's important because when you land on it, there is some flexibility in that plate. You know, my body mass comes down on it, I'm gonna bend that thing, whether you think it's real stiff or not. And you are too. And so that allows it to just deform a little bit and help with the cushioning. And then right underneath that plate, especially in the heel, the sole 
has a big cutout right down the middle of it. And that void allows the plate and your foot to just sink right in there. The foam cushion, uh, cushions your impact sinks a little bit and then you sink into that void. It's kind of a beautiful setup, adding cushioning without any kind of extra weight. Uh, previous version, that channel was a real bear because you'd get rocks. Again, easy days. I didn't mind so much. I'd pick them out at the end of my run, unless they were a real big one and it was hitting the pavement and then that was annoying. But these new ones, the channel has actually got a little bit more of an angle. Uh, it's tapered a little bit more in an effort to really stop you from picking up those rocks. And it's kind of funny, as I was thinking about it this morning, I picked up the shoe, flipped it over, and sure enough, there was a rock. A pretty good size one too. But I hadn't even noticed it on my last run, so maybe not a big deal. Now I do like fresh foam. The material that New Balance is using, it's pretty sweet from my, my form, my biomechanics. It's got just the right amount of cushioning. It's also pretty durable, I've found. I could put a lot of miles on the shoe and not pack it out. When you pack out a foam, you know, the, the foam just doesn't respond as well. It just starts to feel hard. You lose the cushioning efficiency of it. With fresh foam, I don't find that. And I find that it still gives me some life, you know, hundreds of miles in. And I don't have any concerns about this shoe either. We've been putting it through wear testing and it's been doing pretty good. Um, it, it's been proving just as durable as all the other fresh foams we've used and seen. Um, and then adding to that durability story, underneath the foot, there's rubber making contact almost the entire length of the shoe, you know, making contact with the road. So you don't have any of that foam being exposed to the pavement. There's actually a spot because of that channel that's cut underneath there, uh, that carbon fiber plate could impact the pavement. Uh, you know, if you really were to compress that foam good and get onto your stride. So there's a little patch of rubber, rubber covering that carbon fiber plate toward the forefoot. So you're not gonna get that click, click, click as you hit the pavement. You don't want that. It's annoying. It also could cause you to lose a little traction. No problem with this though. You got plenty of rubber under there. That adds to the weight again, but no worries. This isn't a race shoe. I don't care about weight on a non-race shoe, on a training shoe, unless it's poorly balanced. You know, if the bottom, it's, if it's super bottom heavy, you're gonna feel it. It's gonna feel clunky and slappy and stiff. Then that makes the experience bad. But if there's a good balance and your stride just feels good and the shoe, I hate to say disappears or you don't notice it because that's cliche and overused. But if you don't think about it being heavy, what's an ounce or two? Really, I got more ounces here on my body to worry about than in my shoe. Now race day, I care. I care intensely on race day. But for this shoe, it's good. The balance is good. It's right, it feels smooth. When I land, I don't get a clunk, clunk, clunk. It just, it moves. Even though it's stiff because of that carbon fiber plate, it doesn't feel stiff. It's got a good flow under the foot. It's good shape under that sole to really just kind of help you move through your stride. The upper is a totally different beast too. I had some beefs with the V1, especially around the back of the ankle. Kind of a two piece thing there. Little irritation, it was minor for me. Some people liked it less. That's all gone. It's kind of a more traditional construction now in the back of the heel. Um, it's sculpted a little bit more, a little upswept Achilles area, which is fashionable with shoes these days. The one thing that annoys me about modern shoes is these one piece engineered uppers. I think they're great in the fact that they are irritant free. There are no seams to give you hot spots or anything like that. And the companies are able to engineer structure into that one piece in pretty novel ways, but it can look bland. Uh, you know, it's just a one piece mesh. What does a designer do with that? Well, in the case of this shoe, the Trainer V2, they've turned it into an art school project. It's pretty ugly, I'm not gonna lie. And when I wear my pink socks, it's kind of fun to see that shine through the shoe, but there's all these little graphics and the way the, the engineered structure is in there, it just looks to me, ugly. You might like it, whatever. It's cool, we all have our own preferences. I really liked the traditional look of a shoe that was cut and sewn. You know, you know it, it had the sections around the side of the toe box and a separate vamp over the top of the foot. You know, it looked like a classic running shoe. I'm not one of these old, get off my lawn kind of guys, really. I love technology, I love embracing the new stuff. It just, I don't know. I want a little different aesthetic, personally. I love that companies are trying new things. 
I think sometimes it I don't know, just isn't my cup of tea. Uh, I do love the laces on this shoe. Companies, take note. Put some thought and effort into the lacing. You know, some companies make them really long, some companies make them too short, and that's because they use one lace to fit a couple different sizes of shoe. But I love the quality of these. They feel like they're thick and substantial and they bite. When I pull that knot tight, it stays and it's thick. So it's not rubbing across the top of my foot. Wanna swing back around, left. So the Trainer V2 has really good thick lace and it doesn't pull into the top of my foot. And that's nice because it doesn't have, this shoe doesn't have a particularly thick tongue. Not a lot of padding there to protect you from the lacing. So when you build that into the lace itself, just kind of a, spreads out the pressure, feels good, even if you cinch it down tight. Now, again, I say, it's just a training shoe. You don't have to lock these things down tight. You're not worried about rounding corners at high speeds. Perhaps, maybe you wanna get frisky at the end of a run and this thing will definitely do it for you. But otherwise, leave it kinda loose. Just let it flow. Give yourself a little freedom of movement within the shoe. Just make sure you have them tight enough to stay on top of that platform of foam to really harness that good slab of energy returning foam you have under there. Uh, what else do I wanna say? Now the one spot that I really am a bit of a grouch is the price of shoes these days. I don't care about the price of groceries. I'm kidding, I grumble about that as well as everybody else. But the price of shoes, have you shopped lately for shoes? They're getting crazy. It used to be a great deal when you could get a shoe for 100, 110 bucks, right? That was a long time ago. 120 was the standard for a while. But then Nike came along with the Vaporfly and it was 250. And every shoe that was a good racing shoe had to be 250. Otherwise, you implied that your shoe wasn't as good as theirs, right? You had to price it that. Or maybe you'd do 225 or something. Hey, we're giving you a deal. There was a lot of value to be had around 160 bucks. The Saucony Endorphin Speed, when that came out, was 160 bucks. I thought it was a better shoe than the Endorphin Pro, especially at the price. I was like, that's a shoe that's gonna sell. It's still a really good priced shoe. This one's 180 bucks. And I'm gonna say that I'm not mad about that. I think it's a ton of shoe for the price. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah, you know what? Maybe buy last year's on sale. Save yourself some bucks if you can find them in your size. My problem is I never find them in my size on sale. Get this year's, or get this model later in the year on sale if you can. Save yourself some bucks if that's, you know, what you need to do. But even at 180 bucks, I think it's a good value. It's durable, it's gonna get you through a lot of easy runs, and you're gonna enjoy it. That's the most important aspect of a shoe for me. If I spend the money, I'm okay as long as I'm having a good time and I'm using it. If you drop that money and you're not using it, or you're kind of like, I don't know, second guessing that purchase, then it's a bad buy. This, I think it's a good buy at the price. Now, if it starts getting higher in future generations, I might have to quibble again. But then again, the industry might go the same way, so I might not have much choice. All right, thanks for coming on the run today with me. We have this shoe on about a dozen other runners, men and women, different sizes. I'm just one person. I've tested a lot of shoes, so I have a lot of experience. I have a lot of thoughts about shoes, but I'm really eager to go back to the office and read what our wear testers had to say about it because I'm sure somebody's gonna have a different opinion than me. We're gonna put all that together. We're gonna put words together about it so that we have a more comprehensive picture. But I wanted to tell you what I find in the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer V2.